uh, humorously, I parked my plane one day right next to uh, Soleimani's plane in Erbil. We were kind of salivating him about what we could, should do at that moment in time, but we did nothing. Um, I, I consider him to be my peer competitor, um, and he's everywhere. Uh, so he is, uh, he'll be in Manbij in Syria in one day. He'll be, you know, cavorting around, uh, you know, uh, Iraq and, and, and further afield. So they have laid the seed corn down from Tehran through the, obviously, the southern oil fields through Baghdad, looking for, uh, you know, access, whether it's through Anbar or up through Nineveh. They join hands with Lebanese Hezbollah in, in Syria, or, and that transcends into, into Lebanon. So they've got a de facto crescent as it is now. Um, and I, I, whether or not we did that discovery learning, again, every Sunni leader that I deal with out there, and, and you know the prominent Sunni leaders, uh, will point out that that's the result of your 16 years out here. Do we think that's what we wanted to have? And it's a rhetorical question, clearly, from a Sunni mm -hmm. standpoint, that no, that's, that's imbalanced and we may have to do something about it. And so you wonder, in the big scheme of things, is, is this not an overreach by the Iranians that's going to cause some mm -hmm. backlash from, from the Sunni, uh, you know, the Sunni leadership, the Sunni uh, major countries, and with potentially Israel in the mix, because um, there's the existential threat that Israel forever feels from Iran, and if it's closer to them, it'll only get them more excited.